welcome to my channel i want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel you'll be wondering why i'm so excited today it's because i have spent 1095 days in canada and for people who know what it means it means i am eligible i have met the physical presence requirements to now apply for a canadian citizenship and that's one of the best things of um immigrating to canada because you know that within three years if you stay in canada for 1095 days within five years um you'll be able to apply for citizenship compared to other countries i know in the uk you have to spend like 10 years before you even get an indefinite leave to remain but Canada has made it so easy because even in the U.S. as well, U.S. I think you have to um, spend like five years after you've gotten your green card before you cannot apply for a citizen. But in Canada, you just need to spend like 1,095 days um, uh, within five years before you can then apply for citizenship. So I have spent 1,095 days in Canada. Yay! I feel like screaming. Don't mind me, Jerry. But anyway, um, it's so exciting and um, it, it's been um, sort of a journey and um, I'm going to be talking about the lessons I have learned so far um, for after spending 1,095 days. I'll be talking about the lessons I've learned so that anybody who is coming can also learn these lessons and um, try as much as possible to avoid things that will cause problems. At the end of the day so if you're coming to canada and you're the kind of person that wants to travel up and down just know that it's going to affect your physical presence requirements please be aware of that so that you you know how you plan your travels if you don't spend 1095 days in canada within five years you will not be eligible to apply for citizenship you wouldn't want to leave your home country come to canada and then abuse that opportunity and be traveling here and there and then you lose that opportunity and you don't become a citizen at the end of the day so today i'll be talking about the lessons i have learned um since i came in 2016 2016 we left nigeria the plan was not to even stay the plan was to come and go see me giving advice anyway the plan was to just you know shuttle and then because then i was still in love with my you know my job and i didn't want to stay so but somehow um we came and then we decided to just, you know, cancel our return tickets and, you know, just go ahead and fight the battles. When I mean battles, I mean a lot of things, just random things like that, that just keeps coming at you. Lesson number one is um, you need to surround yourself with positive people. I am a very positive person. If you know me, anybody that knows me from my channel or anybody that knows me even before my channel, they know that I'm a very positive person. When you surround yourself with positive people and when you're experiencing some form of challenges you will be able to get encouragement from these people but if you ex if you surround yourself with people who tell you it's not possible don't don't go there don't apply for this job it will be very difficult for you to you know get grip get what you really want so surround yourself with positive people people who are willing to share information with you and uh, people who will tell you how it is so that you know how to plan yourself People who will be able to give you leads and give you information. You know, uh, leaving um, your home country to a country where you don't have people, it's a very difficult thing. So you need to surround yourself with positive people because it's going to help you a lot. The positive people can be people from the same community just as you are or people from another community. So let's say you're a Nigerian, you can find positive people positive nigerian so you can also find negative people as well people who tell you that don't bother just go and look for this walmart job those kind of people try as much as possible to avoid them but you can also find positive people in another community like indians filipinos um different people from around the world you can find people who will encourage you on your journey once you arrive in canada because seriously um it's not that easy and uh for someone who is just especially for those who abandon everything you know resign sell everything and then just relocate to face the challenges it's going to be a bumpy ride but you need positive people around you so that's lesson number one when we came we had positive people around us i was able to network with so many people before i left nigeria and i some of my some of them were my former colleagues who had landed before me so i was able to communicate with them and get more information from them 
and they were the ones that even gave me leads so when the, once there's a job opening they are the ones that will quickly inform you to quickly apply and um, um, once you apply it's very possible for you to you know get first-hand information from this group of people so surround yourself with positive people on your journey when you come to Canada it's gonna help you a lot lesson number two is take advantage of all the benefits that are available for new immigrants so there are lots of benefits available for new immigrants some of them i've talked about on some of my videos and there are some hidden benefits as well that a lot of new immigrants do not take advantage of number one is the language um, lessons so there are free language lessons free french classes for new immigrants unfortunately most new immigrants do not they find it difficult to you know start learning a new language at the end at their age because they feel it's too late to start learning French but I tell you it's even good if you're learning French because it's gonna boost your career prospects if you're bilingual if they are paying a an English person let's say $14 per hour or $14 per hour they'll pay a bilingual person about $16 per hour for the same job so someone who is a bilingual person has a higher advantage over, this, over someone who is not a bilingual person. So take advantage of all the benefits that are available for new immigrants. And there are language benefits, there are grants for new immigrants. In fact, this is one thing I didn't get to hear, or not that I didn't get to hear about it. I knew about it, but I wasn't so, so sure, so I didn't take advantage of it. And by the time I wanted to take advantage of it, it was already too late. And this has to do with you going back to school. So for someone who wants to go back to school, it's very important you take advantage of um, then getting grants from the government. So you get a grant from the government, which automatically is going to pay your tuition. And in most cases, you don't even have anything to refund back to the government. So once you get a grant, you get an extra money from the government as well to cover for your tuition and other expenses. And then after your studies, most times you don't even get to pay the government back because it's a grant. It's a grant they give to people who are new immigrants, people who are low income earners and people who are welfare. So if you want to go back to school, um, it's better to take advantage of it once you land. Because by the time you start working and start earning income, for you to go back to assess those grants, it will not be possible. You will now then resort to taking student loans and then you know, plunging yourself into debt or you cash flow your studies. So it's it's very important to take advantage of all these benefits as a new immigrant. If you know you go back to school, you know what you want to study, it's very important you take advantage of it at the very, very beginning once you learn. Do not wait for when you've started working for one year or two years before you want to go back to school because by that time, it will be too late to, you know, assess all these grants. So those are the things you need to know. Any benefit that's available for new immigrants, it's very important that you take advantage of these benefits. The third lesson is you boosting your self-confidence. Um, Canada is an environment that kind of is intimidating, especially if you're not the type of person that has, you know, been traveling. You've not been a frequent traveler. I was a frequent traveler before I came to Canada, so it kind of... Um, I didn't find it difficult, but some other persons I met were finding it difficult with their self-confidence because, you know, you just have this kind of um, intimidating feeling if what you know will be acceptable in Canada. So it kind of intimidates a lot of people. And at the end of the day, they settle for um, occupations that are lesser than their qualifications and experiences and skills. So you need to have um, a good dose of self-confidence in your skills and in your abilities that you know what you're doing because it's going to help you when you go for interviews. If you go for interviews and you know what you're talking about and it's relatable to the person listening to you when the person is interviewing you, they will easily give you the job. But if you don't have that self-confidence, um, you can go for an interview and you start blabbing even though you know the job, you know it very well, you have the skills, you have the experience, and you go and somebody's interviewing you and you start blabbing, you don't know what you're saying, um, it's going to affect you getting something in line with what you know. So it's very important to, you know, boost your self-confidence and um, tell yourself that you can do the job and know how to communicate very well in a way that the person who you're communicating to understands what you're saying so that you can easily get 
um, something in line with what you have studied. There are lots of situations where people lose their self-confidence, especially with their accents. And you know, we all come from countries with different accents. Everybody has an accent as far as I'm concerned. So once you're talking, everybody knows your accent. And if your accent is more or less an interference to the way you communicate to the person who is listening to you, it might make you lose your self-confidence. So you need to build your self-confidence and talk in a way that the person who is listening to you understands. Most times you'll be talking to them and they'll be say, I, I don't understand. I don't hear what you're saying. So you need to, you know, switch the kind of language that is used. You have to unlearn what you are used to in your home country and start relearning new things when you come to Canada. The way they speak, the way they pronounce words, the way they accentuate words, you need to start learning those things and then build your self-confidence so that when you go for interviews, it will be very easy for you to convince the interviewer that you have the skills and you're capable of doing the job. So that's number three lesson. You need to build, build your self-confidence and boost your self-confidence. It's very easy to lose your self-confidence, especially when you go for interviews and you just get those rejection emails um, that says, yeah, we are sorry, blah, blah, blah. We've chosen someone else. You know, it, it demoralizes a lot of people and makes them lose their self-confidence. So you just have to kind of build your self-confidence and boost your self-confidence. So that's the third lesson. And um, the fourth lesson is do not be in a hurry to get into debt. So that's one major thing a lot of new immigrants do not, um, they don't take their time to learn the banking system and the financial system of Canada. A lot of new immigrants are not used to using credit cards and stuff like that. So they don't even know what it is to pay within a certain period so that you don't acquire um, interest on whatever amount you've used on your credit card. So it's very important not to be in a hurry to get into debt. So some people just come and, you know, they want to finance their cars. I, know, I think everybody has his own way of doing things. Some people have this thinking that financing a car or financing some little, little purchases like furnitures, it's a good way of building credit history which is good especially for new immigrants when you come into canada you don't have any credit history because your credit history is not recognized or if you're coming from the u.s they at least they recognize credit history or any other um maybe a european country they recognize those ones but those of us coming from africa we don't have any credit history so you have to start building your credit history from scratch and with that a lot of people just go into debt and say oh there's free money in my credit card and they just use their credit card to buy things and buy things. I say, okay, um, I'll pay the minimum back. And the minimum is like $10. Paying $10 and not clearing off the debt within the time frame, you're just increasing your debt the more, with more interest to pay on your debt. And the credit card debt, credit card um, interest rate is about 20 to 21%, while line of credit is different, depending on how, how long you've built your credit history. So a lot of people are so much in a hurry to rush into getting into debt, buying a new car, financing a new car, um, rushing to get a mortgage when they don't have a stable job, not even, you know, putting a lot of financial calculations into place before um, doing any form of purchase. So they get into this debt and then start crying and complaining that ah they are being um, swallowed up in debt. So this is one thing I want to advise anybody coming to Canada. Do not be so much in a hurry to rush into debt or to rush into buying things that you feel that oh i can pay it off at the end of the day and then you find yourself in a in a situation where you have to start working 24 hours just to clear off your debt so be as much as possible prudent that's the only best way i can advise you try as much as possible to be prudent with your finances um be prudent with your spending try as much as possible not to get into debt if you're going to go for a mortgage, go for a mortgage that you know you can always afford without resorting to working 24 hours. Because I see a lot of people, you know, not even sleeping in their houses, working 24 hours to pay off a mortgage. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, why are you buying a big house, a $500,000 house, and you're working 24 hours, you cannot even sleep inside the house? It doesn't make any sense to me. So try as much as possible to be financially prudent. I know we like to show off. We are Africans. That's our niche. We like to show off. We love to show off. But be, be, to be truthful, do not follow people who are showing off because <laughs> those things they are acquiring are most times 
they are indebted to them. A lot of people are so much in debt and they don't know what to do. So try as much as possible or not to be in a hurry to go into debt. Just, you know, follow your pace, follow your lane. Do not be influenced by anybody. Um, just do things at your own pace and things will definitely align. If you have a very big job where you're earning as much as um, 100,000 100, and above, you, are, you can go ahead and buy whatever you want. I mean, you're within that level of, you know, where you can finance your things and do whatever you want. But if you're still struggling with a minimum wage job, I mean, it doesn't make sense you acquiring debts to survive. So that's um, another lesson I know I have learned and I am a very, very prudent person when it comes to things like that. I try to, you know, do it. I do a lot of calculations before I won't spend. So that's one lesson I have learned as well. So the fifth lesson is networking. Um, networking means you just have to go out of your own way. There are a lot of people who are not socially um, savvy. They are not, how would I put it? more like introverts they don't know how to um network or meet people meet new people communicate with new people converse with people, new people my husband is a very quiet person <laughs> that's why he, he's always hiding from my videos but me i'm a very social person and um i can go all out to socialize so networking has it will help you a lot in your career move because without networking you will not get the information and it's very important that you network you just have to network you network through LinkedIn, you network through your social gatherings. Um, you also network, you just go out of your way to join uh, maybe a volunteer club or maybe something to just, you know, meet people, meet people, discuss with people. They don't, they don't necessarily have to be from your own home country. You just go out of your cycle and meet people, network with them, you know, talk with people, and then you'll be able to learn a lot of um, things about Canada. you learn how to communicate with them you know you learn a lot of new culture and a lot of things so you just go all out and try as much as possible to network because networking is the best thing that happens to a lot of people when they come to Canada some people are very shy uh, but well you just have to try as much as possible to you know break out of your shyness and network as much as you can network 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 you can be networking on LinkedIn you don't necessarily need to meet, need to meet the person you can just, you know, if the person posts something on LinkedIn, you can just put a comment on LinkedIn and network on LinkedIn. The next thing I want to share is understanding the system and the Canadian laws. Um, they say ignorance is not an excuse. It's very important that you know that ignorance is not an excuse. It's very important you learn the Canadian system and the laws concerning almost everything. For people who have families and children, it's very important. I think I'm going to do a video about um, the foster care system, the child care system, and the do's and the don'ts concerning new immigrants and new immigrants' family. Um, ignorance is not an excuse. Even driving and causing accident, if somebody dies and you're a permanent resident, you will be deported back to your country and you lose your permanent residency status. So that's one thing you need to know. And that's one lesson I have learned. I take my time to learn every rules concerning anything i want to do if it is renting a house i try as much as possible to to know the rules concerning renting a house and maintaining the house and what to do not to offend my neighbor concerning the alarm systems you know there are so many rules you just have to learn those rules you cannot say i didn't know i don't want to say this thing now i talked about fire alarm so if you're going to be living in an apartment building and you know, we Nigerians, we love to cook. And in terms of cooking, we love to fry oil. And you fry your oil, next thing, it triggers the alarm. If it triggers the alarm and the fire brigade comes to your house or the fire service comes to your house, because of that alarm, you're going to be paying about as much as $500 to $1,000. dollars 1000 Canadian dollars. So that's, thing you, that's one thing a lot of people don't know. And they're just like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that this is this is what is going to happen, you know, and then they just go ahead and start frying oil and alarm starts blowing. So please know these things, know the rules and obey the rules. Try as much as possible to live by the rules and obey the rules. Another lesson I've learned is you have to be, uh, you have to work twice as hard to prove yourself. You know, um, why I'm saying this is because there are a lot of people who come and they feel that it's the same thing that happens wherever we are coming from. In Canada, Canada, they are very um, 
how will I put it? They are very meticulous, very detailed. So you have to work twice as hard to prove yourself. To prove yourself that you know the job, you know what you're doing. Even in the workplace, you just have to work. You know, just, you can't be lazy. You know, um, back in my home country, where I used to work before, you know, we are free. You can take, if they say break time is one hour, you can take one hour, 30 minutes. Sometimes you run, run out from the office and go and do one or two to businesses, go to the market, come back, even go for shopping and come back, and nobody's asking you where did you go to. You know, there are some companies that give that kind of laxity when it comes to um, breaks, break rules. They don't really monitor anybody who is going on break. But in Canada, they are very strict with their timing. So you have to work twice as hard to prove yourself. If you are the lazy type, you cannot survive. You have to work twice as hard because you go to work, they just give you like two 15 minutes break and one 30 minutes break. And even the two 15 minutes break or the one 30 minutes break, they are, one of them, they are not paying for it. They may pay for the two 15 minutes break and the employer might not pay for the 30 minutes break. So that's one thing you need to know that um, you cannot, you know, take things for granted and say, oh, okay, I am on 30 minutes break and then you come back 45 minutes later or one hour later. They will, they will, all those things will just be going into your record that you are not efficient, you are not obeying the rules, you are break, breaking the rules. So you have to keep to the rules of the organization you find yourself in. You do not come and say, oh, you didn't know. No, you know. If they say 30 minutes break, you have to stick to the rules of 30 minutes break, especially for private organizations because it's very important. And most private organizations as well, they frown at you using your phone on your desk during work hours. So you try as much as possible to keep your phone away from your site and focus on the job. Once you are done with your task for the day, you can go ahead and start asking, okay, is there any more thing I need to do? So that, you know, they, with, that, with that, just when you're suggesting to them that you need more work, they will know that you're a hard worker and you're an efficient person. But if you're a lazy person and you're the type that goes for a one hour break or a two hours break, you, you might likely lose your job and they don't take nonsense. You know, you just have, you just have to be very efficient and you have, just have to work twice as hard to prove yourself that you can do the job. If any other person is taking excuses for one hour, 30 minutes, you don't know if that person must have called his or her boss to tell the boss, I'm sorry, I'll be taking 30 minutes extra from my break time, which will also be deducted from the person's salary. So those are the things you also need to know. And, um, those are the lessons I have learned as well. When I came, one thing I was doing when I came was, or when I started working was play with my phone. I will not really play. I'll just plug my phone earpiece in my ear and I'll be listening to, you know, lots of music just to distract myself when I'm doing the job. And then I didn't know, I didn't realize that it was offending so many people around me because I was plugging my earpiece. So somebody come and talk to me and I'll, I won't be listen. I won't hear the person until the person taps me on the shoulder to say, hello, you know? So I didn't realize it was offending people. And um, until they called me for a meeting and told me that um, we've observed that you have been playing with your phone. It's against the rules to play with your phone. And I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't playing with my phone. I was just listening to music they said, no, once you are on company time, you have to obey the rules of company time and must you must be focused on the job. And that was it. So that was something I had to learn the very hard way. I had to start, you know, I'm used to listening to music, but I had to start learning how to, you know, work without listening to music. So that's um, one lesson I learned. And I hope that anybody who is coming from Nigeria or anywhere you are in the world, you have to please try as much as possible to obey the rules and work twice as hard to prove yourself to know that to show that you're efficient in your job when you're doing your job and not take um, excess breaks and you know and just you know misbehave and before you know it they are firing you from your job and telling you you are incompetent and once you get fired from your job it's very difficult to get another one because you need to make reference to your previous off job and if they call your previous supervisor, your previous supervisor, they don't hide anything in Canada. They can tell the new person that uh, this person is not efficient. And uh, this person does this, this person does that. And it, it, before you know it, you, you find it difficult getting something better because you already have um, a dented um, reputation in your previous employment for just, you know, playing with your earpiece or listening to music while working. 
So that's uh, the lessons I have learned and the information I want to share for you today. And I also want to use this opportunity. If I, if you know I have not responded to your emails, please, I'm so sorry. I have been writing exams. I'll respond to your emails very soon and just give me exercise, small patience with me, please. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.